You know, I've heard it said before that you can't calm the storm, so stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself and the storm will pass. I bring this quote up today because in today's Ask BIT episode, I'm going to be answering two very similar questions and they both have to do with overwhelm, time management, exhaustion, the demands of leading little lives in our classrooms who may be dysregulated and behind even at the end of the school year and even after you've tried everything to make them successful and to help them to be successful for their school year next year. So if you have felt any of these ways, this episode is for you and I'm going to answer these questions with a lot of help, resources, strategies, and support. Let's dive in. Your choice to begin and continue working in education should not be taken lightly. But how do you manage it all while keeping that fire burning bright so you can show up in your classroom and in life as your best self every day? That's what this show is all about. Welcome to the Burned In Teacher Podcast. I'm Amber Harper, classroom teacher, author of Hacking Teacher Burnout, and with more and more teachers quitting the profession or accepting hashtag teacher misery as their forever reality, I step in as your teacher burnout coach to help you take your next best steps to creating a happier and more fulfilled career and life. Now, let's take one more step forward and out of burnout together so we can burn on, shall we? Let's go. Well, hello there, Burned In Teachers. Welcome into episode 181. I'm your host, Amber Harper, and I'm so excited that you decided to spend some time with me today here on the podcast to talk about something that is oh so familiar to me and to all of the listeners that are out here listening. We have had so many new listeners. We've had so many new downloads of the podcast, and I just wanted to take a second to say thank you so much for, for your support, for listening, for continuing to show up for yourselves by showing up and downloading these podcast episodes. I'm just so grateful every single day that I get to do this work with you all. Um, It helps me to process my burnout. Teaching is so hard and we truly are better together. Before we dive into today's Ask BIT episode and I answer a couple of questions that were very similar, I want to share a lovely speak pipe message that I got from a listener of the podcast and actually a current Burned In Teacher University student and member. I It just lit me up and made my heart so happy to see this message land in my inbox over spring break. And I thought, I've got to share this with you all because if it made my heart smile, I know it will make yours smile as well. Hey Amber, just wanted to drop a quick note and let you know I absolutely loved episode 177 for what uh, administrators can do to show appreciation to their teachers. You were direct, you were honest, and I think said things that so many teachers probably have said or desperately want to say, and their administrators simply don't listen to. So thank you for offering that great advice. Um, I just want to let you know that I borrowed some of the ideas and uh, pitched to a conference to basically give my take on this idea of how administrators can stop burnout in their teachers and make their own lives easier by not having to replace teachers that are dissatisfied with their current school. So thanks so much. You're awesome as always. And I can't wait till your next episode. Thanks. So thank you, Wayne, for that really sweet message. I appreciate it so much. And the reason I wanted to share this with you all as well is because I've had several of you reach out to me via um, Instagram DM or you have emailed me and asked permission to share what you're learning on the podcast with other educators around the world. And my my quick and fast answer is yes, absolutely. I want you to share these messages with everybody and anybody who will listen um, because we have different conversations here on the Burned In Teacher podcast that aren't happening in other places. I do ask if you do share um, anything that you're learning from the Burned In Teacher podcast, I really do hope that you um, that you share the podcast with them. You know, let them know that this podcast exists and that it's here for any educator, not just teachers who are looking for continued support uh, through their burnout and helping them to take their next best steps to a happier and more fulfilled career 
and life. So thank you again so much for all of your continued support and for continuing to show up for for me and for yourself. It's making a world of difference. Um, So if I can ask you a quick favor, if you have not left a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts, would you please do that for me? We'll put a link into Apple Podcasts in the show notes for this episode today. Uh, So you can quickly just click on the link to the Burned In Teacher Podcast. You just scroll down to the bottom, especially if you are on your phone. It's super easy. And you are asked then to leave a up to a five-star rating. I hope it's five. If it's not, let me know why, <laughs> please. And uh, so just leave leave a rating. And if you can just leave a review, I would love to give you a shout out here on the podcast as well. I love to uh, shout out people's names, let them know that I hear them, I see them, and, um, and I would love to do that for you. So, and you sharing your rating and review, it really does help other teachers from around the world to find the support that they need when they need it the most. And I know that some of you out there have been in those rock bottom moments. Maybe you're there now and somehow you found the podcast. So let's pay it forward and help others as well. All right, so let's dive into the first Ask BIT question. I'm going to answer two questions today um, because one of them will sort of build into the next, okay? So the first question comes from Lydia from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, Lydia. Uh, She said, I am never prepared for the next day. When I get the last kid on the bus, I sigh and thank God the day is over, but go back upstairs to my classroom if I can make myself and think about all the things I need to do to be ready for tomorrow and say, screw it, I'll come in early and get it done. Girl, I've been there. Then I grab a bunch of stuff to do that I know I won't even look at while at home. And when I get home, I melt into bed and play on my phone and watch Hulu. How in the world do I bust out of this funk? Wow. I know that there are listeners that are hearing this question and they are raising their hands and going, preach girl, I am so there. And especially at this time of year, it is so hard to focus. It is so hard to stay motivated to do the work that is preparing to teach kids, right? Um, And you'll hear a little bit in my next question too of how, you know, we're not just being asked to plan and prep and deliver lessons. Like we've got a lot of management involved in there too. It's extremely exhausting. So Lydia, I have to answer this question with um, letting you know that I've answered this question in many forms and fashions this school year since this season of the episode released at the end of August. So what I'm going to do is I am simply going to lead you to several episodes that are answering similar questions. Um, and I'm just going to give you the quick uh, quick and dirty version of the strategies that I share in here. Because here's, here's where I see that you are stuck. You have now created a habit because you tell me, I always do this. This is what my day looks like day in and day out. And so what I am telling you, and I'm being very honest with you here, and you may not want to hear this, is that you've created some negative habits surrounding your negative mindset about your ability to get prepared and do the work that needs to be done. And trust me, I get it. I teach kindergarten every day, and it is exhausting. And I find myself falling into some negative patterns that are not normal for me, um, especially at this time of year. You know, end of April, beginning of May, we've only got six weeks of school, six-ish weeks of school left. And it's hard to say, I've got to keep going and I've got to push through and I still have to do this work. Even though it's nice outside, even though I'm tired, I still have to give myself the gift of being prepared because I know that the only other option is to not be prepared, and then my life and my day is just going to get worse and worse and worse from there. So my first suggestion is to go to episode 153 of the Burned In Teacher podcast. In this episode, I lay out five mistakes that I have found myself making that I can see possibly happening in your own teaching life, okay? So I'm going to share these mistakes really quickly and I want you to see which one resonates with you and then I'd love you to give this episode a lesson because I do give some really great strategies and tips on how to move through these things. So number one, you believe that there's no other way to be a good teacher than to have no work-life balance and you wear that lack of balance as a badge of honor. Now I don't really see that in your question, but you're here, right? And you're admitting that you're taking things home and you're not doing them. So why are you even taking them home is my question. 
Number two, you have no idea where to start making changes, so you change nothing. And I feel like that is radiating from your question. You have no time and energy boundaries, so therefore your time and energy boundaries are consistently crossed. I see this. You clearly have a blurred line. So what are you doing during your planning and prepping time? Are you scrolling through Instagram then? Are you watching some Hulu on your prep time? And therefore, you're not getting the things done to help you to be prepared for the next day. Uh, Number four, you have no discipline and no intention in your day-to-day work as a teacher. I know that right now, this is definitely a habit that we can all slip into. And Number five, the mistake that I used to make all the time and I sometimes go to, even to this day, is you really don't want it that badly. Maybe you don't want that balance. I I don't see why anybody wouldn't want it, but maybe it's the work you don't want. Maybe it's that you don't really want to be that prepared. You don't want it bad enough. And hopefully by you asking that question, you are starting to make the shifts that you need to make in order for you to actually do the hard work that it takes to get yourself planned days, even maybe a good week ahead of time, which is something that is always my number one goal when I go into the classroom on Monday is, am I prepared for this whole week? And if I'm not, I got to do the next three, the next few things I'm going to share with you. So number one, you got to change your beliefs and your mindset. If you're telling yourself, I'm unmotivated, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I can't, then you won't. You have to change your beliefs and your mindset about your capabilities to do this work during your contract hours so you can get the heck out of there whenever your contract hours are over. Number two, you've got to do a brain dump. You've got to, and this is a big dreams brain dump, like I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to finish this sentence. Wouldn't it be cool? If I didn't take anything home with me, because I really don't have to, wouldn't it be awesome if I left at my contract hours and I was completely ready for the next day? Wouldn't it be amazing if I came to school tomorrow morning and everything is on my desk ready to go for the whole day and I have everything ready for the next day as well. I just have to get it out at the end of the day and put it on my table. Like thinking about it in terms of, Gosh, wouldn't that be cool? Okay, what do I need to do to get there? That is going to help a ton. Number three, you've got to create boundaries around your time and energy. And a lot of times for teachers, this is creating boundaries with other people, with administrators. Um, but for me, or for you in this in this case, I think you need to create boundaries with yourself. You have to be able to tell yourself no. No. I'm, I'm not going to scroll through in Instagram right now. I'm not going to go through TikTok right now. This is my planning and prepping time. And I'm going to give myself the gift of doing this work now so I don't even think about taking anything home because I don't need to. All right? So you've got to create some strong boundaries with yourself right now. Uh, number four, I want you to approach each day with discipline and intention. So you need to start thinking about your days in terms of blocks and batches and what you do d- during different blocks of your day instead of just kind of coasting through or feeling it like you're on this hamster wheel of exhaustion. We've got to start to show some intention and discipline in our day. So you might feel overwhelmed right now and not know where to start, but action breeds action. So if you do nothing different, you're not going to feel differently. But if you start to create a weekly planning ritual, if you start to create that time allowance that you may or may not have heard me talk about here, um, if you start doing those things, you're going to see, you're going to gain more clarity. Um, so you can get access to the my what I use every week for my weekly planning ritual and the time allowance um, practice that I put in the time management worksheet. Um, I actually have an entire bundle on TPT called the Manage Your Overwhelm uh, bundle on TPT. So we'll link to that here in um, in the podcast show notes. All right. So I hope that that is helpful for you in that episode to get your mind right. Like we have to change that first if we're going to change anything else. All right. The next episode that I recommend for you is to listen to episode 164. And that was actually an Ask BIT episode as well. And this is where I shared my top three systems for managing overwhelm before and during each school year. Um, This one I love doing so much because I actually share with you the questions that I continue to ask myself throughout the year to make sure that I am staying on track. And my first system is making sure that I know my core values. I know why it is that I am doing the work at school even if I don't feel like it. And that is because 
I want to get home and I want to work on burned in teacher. I want to get home and I want to go for a run. I want to get home and I want to hang out with Jeff and Avery. I want to get home and do whatever the heck I want, basically. And if I am not focusing on that when I should be doing the work that it takes to run a successful classroom, then I'm, if I'm not doing that, I'm not going to be honoring my core values and that is going to burn me out because then I'm going to be coming to school unprepared every day. I'm going to be having to work at home and I don't want to do that. So that's number one. My second system is to prioritize. It seems to me like maybe your, prior, your priorities are a little out of whack. So I want you to think about what you're prioritizing throughout the day. And if you're really overwhelmed and you literally don't even know what you're doing with the kids when they come in from recess, we need to start thinking about, okay, what am I teaching every day when they come in from recess? Okay, I'm teaching math. So I need to plan math for today and I need to plan math for tomorrow. I want those two things. Like we're going to start small, okay? Focus on one subject area and get yourself a couple of days ahead. And then do it for the next subject. And then start thinking about what do they do first thing every day that I can have easily prepared for the next five days? And then what's the next thing that we're always going to be doing? How can I prepare that for the next five days? And the more that you prioritize, the more that you um, focus on what is within your control, the more excited you actually will get because you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. You will see that these routines and these procedures and the fact that your day is predictable, not just for you, but for your students, it is going to create that calm that I talked about at the beginning of this um, this episode. Like this, We can't control the storm. We can't control all the things sometimes that we are being asked to do, but we can calm ourselves. And this is one way to do that. Okay, system number three is to set future you up for success. This is what I'm talking about with not just thinking about day by like minute by minute, hour by hour. Um, That might be where you are right now, but I want you to start slowly thinking about setting future you up for success. You have, this is essential. If you're not setting future you up for success, you are setting future you up for failure. And right now, failure looks like how you're feeling right now. You're completely exhausted. You're unmotivated. You're melting into bed. You're taking things home that you don't even, you know you won't even do. So there's really no other option than to start to set Lydia up for success, okay? So reflect on those core values. Think about what, not why you're teaching. I want you to think about why you why you want to leave like why you want to do this work now so you can get out of there and and be guilt free okay reflect on your prioritization and continue to set future you up for success i go way in uh in a way more depth in in this episode so check out episode 164 for that information all right my next suggestion as far as a podcast episode i'd like you to listen to is episode 169 so this is another Ask BIT episode. This is obviously not just you, Lydia. This is a lot of teachers from around the world that are feeling this way, all right? So the question is, what advice do you have for teachers who give so much to work that they have nothing left for life outside of it? And what you're going to see and hear whenever you listen to this episode or you read the in-depth show notes um, for this episode is that you're going to see some repetitive things. You're going to see th- some things repeated from what I've already told you. So number one is to set those boundaries. Right now, you got to set some boundaries with yourself. I've already gone into that. Number two, you need to make time for self-care and relaxation. And how are you going to do that? You're going to get your stuff done. You're going to prioritize and schedule your day to be very predictable, very, very simple, Lydia. Very simple. That means eliminating some things for a while. So you're keeping things simple and smooth and cool and calm for you and your students. Then that's what needs to happen. All right, you get to decide. I want you to build short breaks into your day, okay? So if you're starting to feel that overwhelm, take a lap up and down your hallway, okay? Take some deep breaths and think about what you're going to do when you walk back into your classroom. Are you going to get on Instagram? No. Are you? <laughs> no, you're not. Are you going to sit down and think about what can I do to set future Lydia up for success right now? And that is I need to know exactly what is going to happen the moment the students walk into the classroom. And it's going to be simple and it's going to be predictable and I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow, maybe with a different lesson, okay? What are we going to do after we're done with that? 
after that lesson, what's my next thing that I need to do? Like you're going to start to think about these things on your short break. You're not going to think about the entire storm. You're thinking about what you're doing right now to create calm. And that is going to motivate you to just take one tiny little step forward. We're not thinking about this huge, overwhelming day or week ahead. We're thinking about the next hour. What is it that I need to be prepared for in the next hour? Okay. How can I carry that over into tomorrow? So now I'm also prepared for tomorrow's math lesson. Do you see what I'm saying? If not, send me an email or DM me on uh, Instagram. Let's talk about it. Here's one. Have you asked for support? Have you asked for help? Have you reached out to anybody to ask them how they are managing their time, how they are not overwhelmed? Is there a teacher down the hall or even in a different grade level that you see is like, man, they've got it going on. Like they don't ever seem exhausted. They don't ever seem frazzled. They don't ever seem overwhelmed. What is their secret? Ask them. They will be happy to tell you. And if they're not, I'm here, (laughs) okay? Go to the Burden Teacher Podcast Facebook community and ask. There are going to be a lot of people there ready to support you. The next thing I want you to do is maybe take some time off. Maybe take the day off and commit part of that day to sleeping in, getting some rest, and then maybe use part of that day to start planning. Like really dive into the Manage Your Overwhelm Bundle and plan your next week and man and um budget your time. How many hours are you going to work a day? What are you going to be doing inside of those hours to continue to set future Lydia up for success? Okay. So that's episode 169. And then I'm not going to go through this next episode, but episode 106, I'm sorry, episode 171 is transform your to-do list with this one simple shift. And it's all about giving yourself a gift. It's all about setting future you up for success. And that's what I want you to focus on. I don't want you to focus on how overwhelmed, unmotivated, and exhausted you are right now. I want you to think about how do you want future Lydia to feel? Okay, because she deserves to feel prepared. She deserves to feel rested. She deserves to feel like she's got it going on. Just like that teacher down the hall. Like she knows what she's doing and she's going to pack up her, no, pack, don't even pack up your bag at the end of the day. Leave it there. Leave it at school because you know what is going to happen the next day. How does that sound to you? Like how does that make you feel? It's going to take some work, Lydia. I'm not li- I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to take you shifting your mindset. It's going to take you doing something different to get out of this funk. And hopefully this has lit a fire under you. (laughs) That's the purpose of this podcast. You know, I've often said, you know, when you work with a teacher burnout coach or you work with any coach in in any capacity, it could be a volleyball coach, a baseball coach, they're going to push you. They're going to make you do things you don't want to do. They're going to say things that you don't want to hear. But I just want you to stop and think about how you're feeling now. Because listening to these episodes Getting this clarity on what you need to do for you in the next hour, in the next day to set future you up for success is everything. And the fact is you can listen to all of these episodes in order, take notes, but if you don't do anything, you're going to remain in the same place, okay? So I've given you some homework and I want you to let me know, Lydia, how things are working for you. So please send me an email at support at burnedinteacher.com or DM me on Instagram at burnedinteacher and I'd love to hear from you, okay? So thanks so much for your question. All right, with that being said, I'm going to dive into the next question and this one is from Maggie. And Maggie said, I'm really struggling with balancing all the demands of teaching along with the extreme social emotional needs of my students. Girl, I am there with you. I am very open to finding resources to incorporate to help my students with their needs. And I'm also a very flexible teacher. But how do I protect my own sanity while also meeting all of the lagging skills and teaching them academics? How do you handle these demands? All right. So what I suggest to you, Maggie, is number one, I know you. You are in the membership. You are a part of Burn and Teacher University. I know that you are very good at investing yourself and investing in yourself and that you are willing to learn new things in order to get new results, right? So the reason that I saved your question um, last here is because I want you to pay attention to everything that I just told Lydia. 
And that starts with your mindset. What it sounds like you're doing is you are really beating yourself up about things that are out of your control. You know, you can be the best classroom manager, the best behavior manager, the best teacher, you know, in your own mind, whatever that looks like to you. But the fact is, is there are some things about our students that we cannot change. One, and not even one year, 180 days with us is not enough time. It's not enough time to help them to heal from the trauma or make up for their lack of academic skills that they have had from years previous. It's not enough time. And quite frankly, I don't believe that that's on us as teachers to feel like we have to bear the weight of how far behind they still might be. So what I want you to do is think about your mindset, first of all, and start to think about how much they have grown. Um, You know, I had a student that moved into my classroom um, in November, the end of November, and then he was even gone for like a week after his first day, and then he came back at the beginning of December. He is a full four months behind the rest of the students, if not a little bit more. But he shows the potential of knowing so much. And I have to quit having that conversation with myself of, gosh, if he would have just been here at the beginning of the year, he would be so much further. Should I hold him back? No, absolutely not. It's not his fault that he showed up four months late. And it's not my fault either. And I have worked with him so hard within my own capacity. Other teachers have helped him so much within their capacity. And what we have done is good enough. I I can't save him, right? We can't save all of the students with all of the needs that they come into our classrooms with. But what we can do is do the best that we can with the time that we have and to know in our hearts that that's what we've done this year. And I've faced a lot of hardships this year. I don't know about you all, but I have had And I know you know this because I'm very open about it. I have faced some extreme behaviors I've never seen before in my entire teaching life. Or I've never even seen them when I was a student. I had no idea that this was going to be the year for that. And what I have chosen to do is truly let go of that narrative that I should have fixed them by now. Or this should have happened. Or their parents should have done this. Or think of where they could be if this. No. That shoulda, coulda, woulda talk is only going to drag me down and it will not make a damn bit of difference (laughs) in their outcomes. All I can do is the best that I can do each day with them and then it's time for them to move on and that's okay. And that doesn't mean that we have to agree with the system that we're working in, but when we show the radical acceptance of this is the way it is, And I'm doing the best that I can to manage this within my control, within my classroom, within this 180 days, you are going to take so much pressure off of yourself. And this translates to Lydia too. Up to now, you've done the best that you can with what you have. And now you know that you can choose to let go of that old mindset of that you're overwhelmed and you're exhausted and you're not capable of managing your time well. You are. So we have to move on from that and know that right now our best is what it is today. And we do not have to carry the weight of all that's put in front of us. So Maggie, your final question was, how do you handle these demands? And in some cases, I don't. I don't. I just say, I am literally right now just going to do the best that I can. And right now, the best that I can do is to take a deep breath and ask my assistant to watch the class so I can go take a take a break in the bathroom for a second. And then I'm going to come back and I am going to keep doing the best that I can with those students when they're in my care and to help them to know that I love them and that I care about their academics. I care about their social emotional needs. And then I have to move on. And I'm going to do that without any blame. I'm going to, I'm not going to, I don't blame the students. I'm not blaming the parents. That's useless. And all it does is drag me deeper. I'm going to move forward with grace, with radical acceptance, and to know that tomorrow is a new day and a new opportunity to do better. And some days I do better at that than others. But I'm going to send these kids to first grade knowing that I truly did my best with them. And I'm going to look at how far they came. Oh my gosh, they came in not even being able to hold a pencil. These kids are writing maybe a word. 
They're tapping out sounds. They're counting to 10. They're writing their numbers to 100. Yeah, maybe they are using a 100's chart to help them, but that's what they need. And the pressure that we're put on to make these kids college ready in elementary school is ridiculous. And the fact that you're asking this question, Maggie, shows me that you care so much. But it's time for you to take a deep breath and let some of that pressure go. Dare I even say, care less. That doesn't mean you're careless. doesn't mean you're cold. It doesn't mean you're heartless. doesn't mean you're not a good teacher. You have to do the best that you can with what you have today and then tomorrow and then the next day. And know in your heart that that is enough. And you are enough. And... You know, I can't say all these things without being a little afraid that maybe I'm triggering some people. (laughs) So, and I'm okay with that. This podcast is meant to help you to have these hard conversations. And this is a hard conversation we need to have with ourselves. Like if you are truly going into your classroom prepared, you are investing in yourself, you're educating yourself, you're doing the things that you're learning, know that that's enough. You are enough. And Maggie, I know you. I know that you want to do the best, you want to be the best, and you are. So take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned-in teacher. Burn on. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. To keep this conversation going, connect with me on Instagram, at burnedinteacher. I'm always ready and willing to have a conversation with you about your burnout and ways I can help you to move through it. If you're looking for support in growing through your burnout in ways you never thought possible, check out my online course, Burned In Teacher University at burnedinteacher.com slash course. I'll see you in the next episode. Burn on.